here at Key State Land Grant, and, and part of our mission is, is public outreach and serving the research needs for the state. So I really tried to understand what it was that, that, that I could do to help. I spent one summer just driving the state, trying to talk to as many people as I could that were in the water area about, about the issues, and it all kind of came back to the Ogallala Aquifer. The Ogallala Aquifer covers eight, eight states from South Dakota to Texas and uh, produces about 30% of all the irrigated agriculture in the United States. Um, in Kansas, the Ogallala Formation sits over the western roughly third of Kansas, and uh, it's part of a High Plains unit. The High Plains unit also stretches as far east as Wichita, and Wichita gets about half their water from the High Plains Aquifer. It's more than just groundwater. Um, somebody once told me that uh, the water in Kansas, the groundwater is not blue, it's green, and uh, meaning that there's a lot of economics tied up into it. The groundwater is declining in, in the Ogallala Aquifer. It's very important for the, for the region, uh, for, the, for the state of Kansas, the irrigation it supplies. So we, we looked at the, the decline of the water, uh, the crops that it would produce, and then the cattle that it would produce as well. Roughly 30% of the water has been used up through today. Uh, in, in the Ogallala as a whole. So we took our projections and we went out into the future and found that over the course of about the next 50 years, another 39% of the water will be used, so roughly 70% uh, within the next 50 years. We're on a trajectory, we're on a course, but there are still things we can do to change the path that we're on. The, the final outcome and the path that we get there is not preordained. It's something that we have, we as society have the, have the ability to, to make decisions today that are going to have significant implications in the future.